Let's take a look at browsing and searching as part of CAD data management with Creo Parametric and Windchill. Here I am in a Creo Parametric session. I am connected to Windchill. We'll look at browsing first. And sometimes you don't have enough information to perform a search, so you just have to navigate through the various different parts of Windchill to locate the data that you're interested in. Over on the left-hand side of Windchill in the embedded browser, you have the navigator panel, and there are two different functions here, search and browse. To browse, you click on the browse button. Right now, it's showing me different libraries. If I want to go to a product, I will click on the products icon. Here I can expand different ones I'm interested in and say, okay, let's take a look at the folders over here. And then I see there are other folders in here. So I could go to those folders and say, okay, you know, are any of these different objects the ones that I am interested in? Besides browsing in your products, you can browse through your libraries. So let's click on the recent libraries. Sometimes you might not see the library you're interested in because this just shows your recent libraries. You might need to go to view all to see all the different libraries that you have access to. And then again, you can go to the different folders and you can say, okay, what do I want out of here? Maybe it's going to be a fastener. Maybe it's going to be a bolt. And then when you find the object that you are interested in, you can right click on it and then choose to add it to a workspace. And here in the Add to Workspace dialog box, we see that we have our object listed in here. I happen to notice that this is a family table generic. We can also use the collectors to add any other related objects like the family table instances. You could add related drawings. So there are a lot of different options that you have for collecting what you want to be added to your workspace. And here it's got a workspace in here. I'm a strong advocate when you have a new task, create a new workspace. And so we're gonna create a workspace. Let me use the date so I know how old this workspace is when I'm doing some housekeeping. And maybe I'm going to do some transmission work. So I'll put that in the name. You can write in a description if you want. Right now, it is associated with the library that I was browsing through, but you could change it to one of your other different contexts that you are using. I'll click the OK button out of here. And yes, I want to change the target workspace. And I have to redo some of the collections in here. That's good. Let's click the OK button. And now I can see the contents of my workspace in here with the objects that I browse to. So again, browsing is good to use when you don't really know what stuff is named and you're just trying to figure out what you want to use. But the recommended method of locating for information within Windchill is by searching. And so there are, we'll, we'll cover five different ways of searching in here. The first way that we're going to take a look at is simple searches. So in the upper right hand corner of every page in Windchill, you're going to have a simple search. We have a drop down list where we can control what we are searching for. So for example, I'm adding stuff to my workspace. So I know that I just want CAD documents. So in order to limit the number of search results and also make it go faster, I could limit this to CAD documents. One thing to be aware of, this is going to be set until you change it. And so very common problem that people make is that they will set this and then forget that it's set to a certain object. And then they're looking for all sorts of other different things. And they're like, hey, why isn't it coming up in the search? That's because they don't have this set to all types. So just be aware of that. And then you can type in your search criteria. For example, let's say that I am looking for something with let's say AH in the name. Those are the only letters that I might know about it. I will hit the enter key and the search is performed in this particular situation. It came down with 16 different objects and from the search results over here, you can either check multiple different objects if you want and then hit the add to workspace icon. If it's just one particular object that you're interested in, you can right click on it and then add it to your workspace just like 
we did with the browsing results. So any of the different results over here, you can add to your workspace, click the OK button, and now if I take a look at the workspace, that object is in there. So first, that is the simple search. From the simple search, you have a drop-down list, and this will show you a number of your recent searches. In this particular case, it looks like it is set to five recent searches for me. You also have the ability to go to search history and save searches and advanced search. And I'll show you how you can get to that from the navigator as well. So let's take a look at those different advanced searches. You can click on the search button over here, and it's going to expand the panel. Here we can see the search that I had just conducted a moment ago. If you go to search history and saved searches, here it's listing a bunch of different searches. So here's one I did today, and here's some older searches. And the nice thing about this list is that you can just click on one of the older searches, and it will re-execute that search so that you can get back to it again. And sometimes you might have performed a search, let's say I searched for something yesterday and it's pretty close to what I want to search for today. Hey, you can just select a previous search and then use the pencil icon in order to modify that search. Now I could say, hey, maybe I just want to narrow this or actually expand this search over here. It's looking for CAD documents. I also want to get WT parts in there. And then I can hit the search button and here I've modified that search in order to come up with a number of different results. Let's take a look at the advanced search option over here. Let me go to edit search criteria. So here we have the advanced search and there's a lot more flexibility that you have in here. So for example, let's say that I am searching for something and I know that starts out with zero one you can use wild cards in here you can use the asterisk for any number of characters and you can use the question mark if you just want to do a wild card for a single character and here's where you have the option for all types or you could do my favorite types and you can add other additional types into your favorite types or unselect all of them and say, hey, I'm just interested in looking for CAD documents, seeing as I'm intending to add stuff to my workspace. Let's see some other things that we have in here. Right now, by default, it's going to search all contexts, but instead you could choose my favorite contexts, and then I could see which ones I have access to or type in a search. Let me just try wildcard. Okay, so here are all the contexts that I have access to. And I could say, hey, you know what? I want to search in this one over here. So I'll click the OK button. And that way, it is limiting the search to that one particular context. And here's where you have more advanced criteria. And the criteria that you have available here is going to be dependent on the filter that you have on types. So for example, if I go to this one over here, we can see that the list is relatively short in here, but if I actually change this to all types over here and then go to the criteria, eh, might change a little bit. So anyhow, let me go back to CAD documents and let's see for the criteria for the first one. Uh, I am going to search for something that I made. Maybe I can't remember the exact number over here. So I can go to created by and then use the search over here. And let's see, I happen to know that my username is D Martin. So let's hit the search button and then click the OK button. And let's see the other thing that I want to search for. Let's search based on state. And I know that one of my design states that I want to use for searching is for stuff in the design state. And then you can add in other additional criteria. So for example, I'm going to use the plus sign and I'm going to use a, another criteria of document category because I know that I am just interested in assemblies. I don't want to get parts or drawings or anything else. And so in that way, I have constructed a search. And let's say I know that I will probably want to use this search a few more times this week. Hey, I could save this search and then I can type in the search for it and I could call it my transmission search. 
and hit the save button over here and so it tells me that it was successfully saved now when I go back to my saved searches hey here's the search that I can use and if I'm done with a search I can delete it if I want to alter the search I can use the edit criteria button but let's click on the search and the search is executed in the search results you can click on a column that you want to sort by and that way I could figure out oh, okay I think this is the object that I actually wanted so I can select this one add to workspace and here it's got all the different dependent objects in here you can use your other collectors but I will just click the OK button in order to add those different objects to my workspace let me use the collapse icon and so here I can see my workspace I'm populating it with the different objects that I'm going to use in my work today and so let's take a look at the fifth method that we have for searching and that's by using the search tab over here in the Creole parametric navigator let me collapse the embedded browser this over here is the navigator when you have an option or excuse me an object like a part or an assembly open that's where you see the model tree here we have our folder browser that we can use to access wind chill or our common space if you save any internet favorites they'll be listed over here but this other tab is for performing searches so you could do it from here as well and so if I go to the drop down list you could customize this here we have the drop down list for where we want to search so for example maybe I want to open up the search to all products and libraries I can do that and we're searching for Creo models for the file name let me enter in a broad search term 05 star you could add in number and keyword and I could say hey you know I only want stuff that was updated in the past two weeks and then I can do a search and here we can see the results of the search in this small list over here and from here you can click on the different objects like I can click on it and it takes me to that objects information page in Windchill so I can determine if I actually want to access it and here you have the ability to add to the workspace from the uh, actions drop down list and honestly I don't use this search over here just because I find it kind of small and hard to read uh, but you have that ability to use this small search tab over here and if you want to you could use the clear button or then save this search so that you could use it from the tab inside of Creo parametric as well so just to recap for the five different methods that we covered for searching you have the simple search in the upper right hand corner of every page in windchill you have the drop down list with your recent searches you could also use the search tab in the embedded browser navigator and so this is where you can create advanced searches and also access your search history and save searches and as we just mentioned you have the search tab over here in the Creo parametric navigator I hope you enjoyed this video for more information please visit www.creowindshow.com if you learned something from this video please give it a thumbs up and if you like this video please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded Thank you very much.